on the interweb. So Ooh. welcome, spirit1053.com. Glad you found us. And we are lucky enough to have Cutlass in the house because last night they were in Renton performing for one of their Christmas concerts. And so I think they're kicking us off with a Christmas song. We can Christmas song first. Okay. Let's do it. No. So, or whatever you're tuned to, you guys do your own thing. Please welcome Cutlass. Awesome. Well, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll start off with uh, a Christmas song. Um, this is a song that a uh, uh, buddy of mine, um, Dave Lubin, who's produced our last few records, um, he and I uh, sat down and wrote this song a couple years ago. Um, but I just, I felt like the Christmas season, it's really easy to um, get focused on all the wrong things. All you have to do is go to Macy's for about 30 seconds, and there's a million things vying for your attention. And, um, you know, during the Christmas season, though, uh, I, I, was, I was just reminded that it, without without the core of the meaning of Christmas, without Jesus coming to this earth and, to, and you know, coming as a baby, ultimately to die upon a cross for our sins, it would change the whole perspective of the way that I view Christmas, the way my family views Christmas. And it would be really empty. There really wouldn't be a whole lot. It, it's beautiful in aesthetics, you know, the lights and the trees are beautiful, but it wouldn't have real substance or meaning. Um, and Christmas wouldn't be nearly as glorious. It wouldn't be nearly as special. And so really what is Christmas without the birth of Jesus Christ? And my heart goes out to all the people out, out there that are going to be celebrating this Christmas, but yet really have no meaning. They celebrate Santa Claus and reindeer and, and then it's just kind of like, okay, Christmas is over and it's, it's really kind of empty and meaningless. And so I'm so thankful that we have a meaning that is much greater than that because it, it makes Christmas so much more special and it, it really makes it a beautiful, wonderful thing. So that's what this song is all about. It's called This is Christmas. sleep tonight resting by the Christmas lights could there be something you forgot yawning balls and mistletoe a tree with presents right below there's more to this than you had ever thought have we lost the God's gift was wrapped in swaddling clothes beneath the star great and holy night the shepherds heard the angels sing the wise men brought an offering peace on earth and in Bethlehem have we lost the
Well, we uh, we spent most of our summer um, working on some brand new music, so we're uh, we're really excited about it. We have a new record coming out in February, and um, people always ask us, uh, you know, our, over the course of our career. We've done rock records and worship records, and so everyone says, well, what is this next record? Is it a rock record or is it a worship record? What is it? And our answer lately has been yes. Um, and uh, we are a rock band. We love to rock out and have a good time, but we love to worship God, and that's really the heart of what we do. And so this new record, we've written um, really specifically songs that we hope that the church can play. Um, you know, songs like Strong Tower. Uh, it was really interesting because I I've had a lot of worship leader friends that are like, man, we tried to play that song at our church, and uh, it's really high. <laughs> it's really hard to sing. Um, and so uh, we've really intentionally tried to create and write some of these new songs um, so that they're singable, so that people can sing along with us and worship God with us. And so that's kind of our heart. Um, and we want to take kind of the skills that, that uh, we're good at, playing electric guitar and things like that, um, and use that for God's glory in, in kind of a more corporate worship setting. And so uh, this song uh, is, the, is the first song that's on radio. Uh, it came out, uh, I think, about a month ago or so. Um, this is a song called You Alone. And uh, it just really talks about how there's only one God that is worthy of honor and glory and praise. You know, and we, we all were created to worship, um, and we will be worshiping something, one thing or another. Maybe we worship our car and keep it perfect and shiny, um, or maybe we worship uh, money, or maybe we worship relationships or food. Um, this time of year, it's easy to get into food worship. <laughs> um, but ultimately, there's only one thing that is truly worthy of worshiping, and that is Jesus Christ.
Awesome. We're all fighting colds and stuff, so hopefully our voices don't squeak too much. Sing this with us. Splendor of earth rejoice, and all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide, trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God age to age he stands age to God, in this Christmas season, we pray that we would find ourselves focused on you. May this season be all about you, Jesus, and the things that we do, even the gifts that we give to one another, and the time that we spend with family and friends, God, may our, our focus be upon you, our focus be upon the birth of a Savior. God, come to this earth, manifested himself in flesh to ultimately sacrifice himself upon a cross. What a beautiful and wonderful thing that is, God. We thank you for that. We pray that you be glorified this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, uh, if you've got your iBible with you, <laughs> um, you, can, uh, you can turn to the book of John, chapter 9. I was reading this the other day, and, um, you know, I was really, uh, something jumped out at me in this passage, and um, I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of these stories, uh, man, I've, I've heard this story 
since I was a little kid, you know, growing up in the church at Sunday school. This is the story of when Jesus heals the blind man, um, puts, you know, puts mud on his eyes and tells him to go wash his eyes off and, and the guy can see. And for most of my life, I looked at this story as, uh, as really just a miracle. Like, wow, look at what God did. What a, what a wonderful miracle that was. And look at how powerful God is. And, um, it, you know, it, it's funny, and as, as, we, as we grow up in the church, uh, for those of us that, that did grow up in the church, um, you know, you, these stories can almost get redundant from, some, t- from time to time, and, and you think, oh, yeah, I've heard this story before, this is the one where he puts mud on his eyes, and, you know, that's kind of gross, um, <laughs> and he washes it off, and he can see, I wonder why he did that, and, and we, sometimes we don't look at the next layer of what's really there, and what I love about the Bible is that it's living and it's powerful, and uh, a passage that I've read hundreds of times um, can one day, as I read through it, hit me in a way that I thought, man, I've never noticed that before. I've never seen that before. And so as I was reading, what what I thought was really interesting, it says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And I found it interesting that the disciples, their first reaction was to cast judgment upon this man and to say, well, he must have done something really wrong. The fact that he's blind. And this was common in the Jewish culture at that time. You know, typically they believed that um, that it was a result of sin. And that's not to say, I mean, surely uh, sin does cause disaster. And so if we go on sinning, there will be repercussions of that sin. But that doesn't necessarily mean that every hardship that we have in life is a direct result of sin. You know, sometimes I think, uh, yeah, absolutely. If if we if we're doing things we're not supposed to be doing, you know, if you kill somebody, you're going to end up in jail. Like, that's the result. Uh, so obviously, there's a cause and effect there. But sometimes stuff happens, and health happens, um, and and things happen in your life. Uh, the last couple of years. Uh, my wife and I have really gone through a difficult season where uh, she's gone through some really difficult health problems, been in and out of the hospital. And, and, uh, and y- your tendency is to go, God, what did we do wrong? Like, what did we do wrong? Why are we here? Why are we dealing with this? Did we, did, did we mess up? <laughs> Am I not doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And I love what Jesus says here. He, he says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And as I read that, I thought, wait a minute. It's not about this man being healed. This miracle that we see here, it's not about him at all. Really, God says the reason that this man was born blind is so that I can come in today and show the whole world who I am so that I can bring light to the world. So as even as I bring light to this man's eyes to where he can see for the first time in his life, so too I bring light to the whole world. For while I am here, I need to be the light of the world. This man was born blind so that God could be glorified. And what, a, what an amazing concept that was. As I read that, I thought, man, could it be that the difficulties in my life are so that God can be glorified? And it's very difficult for us sometimes to look at our own life and, and the, the tragedies and the trials and the difficulties and to say, ah, this must be happening so that God can be glorified. That's not my first tendency. My first tendency is to be like, poor me, life is hard, it's really cold outside, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 I, and I tend to get in kind of this, this self-focused mode. And what I've learned is that the best way that I can combat depression, the best way that I can combat hardships, the best way that I can combat these things that tend to creep in and weigh me down is to focus on Jesus because he is the light. He brings light to my life. And ultimately when I do that, then guess who gets the glory and who's glorified through the whole situation. And so, you know, it's, it's been interesting even, uh, I know many of you guys are familiar with our song, Even If, and that was a very difficult song for us because Ultimately, it dealt with a a kind of a heavy topic of what do you do when life doesn't go the way that you expected? What do you do when things are not what you had hoped and and your life begins to fall apart? And we see in this this Christmas season especially, this is the most depressing time for a lot of people because maybe they don't have a family or maybe Christmas just reminds them of all the heartache and all the troubles that they've had in their life or the dad that never showed up on Christmas or or the things that they never had. And 
and so Christmas for some people, for me, it's such a joyous, wonderful time. And as I mentioned before, like, because in my house, man, we're focused on the birth of our Savior. Like, what a wonderful thing that is. But if you're focused on tragedy and trials and difficulty and broken families and all of those things, man, what a depressing time of year this can be. And so I, as I thought about that, I thought, you know, could it be that maybe for some of us, that maybe our, our focus gets on our issues and our focus gets on our troubles and, and our difficulties, could it be that ultimately that God wants to use that so that he can be glorified? And I love what happens here a little bit later on in the story because this, this, this guy, he, he ultimately he gets, he starts getting questioned by the, by the Pharisees. They're like, what happened? How is this possible? Is this not the guy that was begging in the streets, this guy that had nothing, that was messed up, that's a sinner? Because they all judged him. Because he was blind, the general consensus was that this man had sinned. When the disciples approached Jesus, it wasn't a question of if he sinned. It was who sinned, him or his parents. And so the general consensus was this guy's, this guy's messed up. He's made mistakes. He comes from a sinful family. He comes from a dark background. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. It's not about that at all. It's about me. And what's awesome then is as the Pharisees are like, what's going on here? How is this possible? How could you be, how could you be healed now? And he's like, I don't know. This guy spat in some mud, rubbed it on my eyes, and now I can see. And they're like, who is this guy? This guy's Jesus. And, and, and so then they, they bring in this man's parents. And his parents, it's a very complicated political situation here. Because his parents know that the religious leaders are not happy about this, yet their son can see. We should be rejoicing, right? But they're in this very complicated political situation where the, the, the religious leaders are saying, hey, how did this happen? What's going on? And, the, and really, from this point forward, the religious leaders were looking to kill Jesus. They were not happy about what he was doing. And so they're trying to manipulate the situation and, and figure it all out. And, and they say, we don't know. Ask our son. He's of age. Like, you can ask him. He's 18, you know, or over 18. Like, ask him. Let him respond, because he was there. We weren't. And so they pass the buck back on their son. It was real nice of them, his parents, to be like, you figure it out, son. And, uh, and so he, he's standing there <clears throat> before the religious leaders, and they say, you know, throw us a bone here. What happened? And he said, all I can tell you is that I was blind, and now I see. He's like, I can't explain it to you. I can't tell you the theological implications of how I got here. I can't tell you the scientific reasoning for how my eyesight is here. All I know is that this man, Jesus, came up to me, and I was blind, and now I see. And God was glorified in that moment because everybody, how do you argue with that? You can't argue, and well, no, you can't see. I can tell you, you're still blind. No, he's like, I can see. And Jesus did it. And there's nothing anybody can do to change that. And I've found that the greatest testimonies, often the testimonies that have the most impact, the testimonies where God is glorified the most, is when we are in our most broken state, when we are in a state where we are beyond repair, and people look at us and they go, he must have done something really bad to deserve all that. He must be in a really bad place in his life for that to happen to him. And God says, no. No, it's not about him. It's about me. Watch what I'm about to do. Watch how I'm about to do something beautiful and wonderful. And we walk away and we go, I don't know how I got out of that. I don't know how I'm still alive. I don't know how I'm still here. But all I know is I was there and now I can see. And Jesus did that. What a powerful, wonderful testimony that is. And so I would just encourage you guys, whatever it is in your life, maybe it's minor, maybe it's major. Um, we all have issues in our life. It's a daily thing that we struggle with. Um, if you don't have issues today, you probably will tomorrow. Um, life is hard. It simply is. Uh, we live in a broken, imperfect world. Um, and so the message that, that I would just love to encourage you guys with today is whether it's relational or financial or health issues or whatever it is that you guys struggle with, um, may you turn to Jesus and say, God, can you be glorified in my life in spite of these struggles? And can you be, I, I, I'm willing to just hold on to you and to trust you. This blind man, when God told him to put mud on it, I mean, he spit in dirt, made mud out of it, and put it on his eyes. I'm like, what are you doing? You're nuts. Why are you making mud? Like, this is crazy. And yet, this man just trusted him. He said, go wash it off. Go wash it off. And now he can see. And I think there comes a, there's a trust factor there that we oftentimes as Christians, and I know for me as a guy, I, I'm kind of a type A personality, and like when I get in the car, I always like to be the one driving, you know, like I want to be in control of the vehicle, and the and, uh, problem is my wife likes to drive too, so fortunately she's gracious. <laughs> but, uh, but so we, you know, so we, uh, 
I, I like to kind of have control over the situation. I like to be able to plan things out and to know what's coming next and, you know, anticipate and, you know, Boy Scout motto, always be prepared, right? You know, and, uh, and yet when it comes to things of God, I have to let go. And say, God, I don't understand. This mud, this makes no sense. This is craziness. The situation I'm in right now is craziness. But I trust you. And I put my life in your hands, and I trust that you're going to be glorified. And when you live in that place, it changes the way that your whole life operates. Because now suddenly this tragedy isn't this brokenness that I'm lost in this depression or this, this darkness. But you say, there's light here, and God will be glorified in this. And I don't know how. And ultimately, someday I'll be able to say, I don't know how I got here. But ultimately, Jesus did it. And what a wonderful and powerful thing that is. So I hope that encourages you guys or you can pass that along to, to maybe people you come into contact with. And like I said, especially this season, um, it's a very difficult time for a lot of people. And, uh, and so we just want to encourage you guys and, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that touched your heart a little bit. I know it just jumped out at me the other day when I read it and just want to share that with you guys. So thank you so much for having us. We're glad to be here. And uh, man, it's always great to, we've been here a couple times now. It's always great to see you guys again. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Hope uh, just bless blessings on your families, and hope you guys have an awesome Christmas season. Let's close in prayer real fast. God, we thank you again so much for this time. I pray a blessing upon all these people here, Lord, and the ministry that you've given them here at this radio station. Lord, we pray that uh, even as the airwaves go out and, and really reach literally thousands of people, God, we pray that the message that is carried on those airwaves will bring encouragement and hope and life. Lord, I pray that during this Christmas season that those that are hurting, those that are depressed, those that are wounded, those that are lonely would find you and may they turn to you and may their lives be radically changed. God, may you use the work of this station and, and the music that comes from here and the words that are spoken from here. God, may you use that for your glory. For all the people working behind the scenes, God, may you encourage them. May you remind them that their, their role here is just as important as, as the role that happens through the microphone. And God, we pray that you would just just a special blessing upon each and every family represented here this, this morning, God. We, we love you. We praise you. and pray you just bless the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen.